Welcome back, MMA Odds Breaker. Today, of course, we got DC, Daniel Cormier on. I broke him up in the middle of his nap. You guys got done yelling at his dog. Um, today was a big media day, right, for UFC? Yeah. I, we, I, look I, behind I guess, me. Hey, hi, sweetie. How are you? My daughter's back there. Kiki, say hi. Hi, hi. She's always kind of like, what's dad doing now? I know. It was good. You know, it was, it was, uh, we, we did the media call, uh, talked to some people, and Talked about the fight, you know. A lot of the questions are, are the same, you know. As 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 you expect, Jones cast a huge shadow over this fight uh, because of his situation. But you know what? I thought uh, we got through it pretty good. Uh, it was. It's a blessing in disguise for you that he's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, man. I, I. It's just that his. It's you know, in this situation, his his uh. His mistake is going to actually give me an opportunity to gain something, you know. Um, but I didn't get, I didn't get. No, no, no stop, mom, stop, stop. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't get this fight just because you know he made a mistake. You know, my resume speaks for itself. You know what I've done over the course of my career actually made me the next uh, contender. You know, but uh, yeah, obviously his mistake does uh, give me an opportunity, and I'm. But isn't it really how it works in wrestling? Even you're, you're basically waiting on the guy to make a mistake, and all of a sudden you're up five nothing. You wait on the guy to make a mistake, and all of a sudden you got a pin. So it's kind of like what you've been doing since you were six is capitalizing on other guys' mistakes and, and getting gold medals. Isn't that kind of well, how you work already? Exactly. You know, and staying prepared. You know, it, it, just because after our fight, you know, he had the issue with the drug test, and mm -hmm. you know, you then then he had um, the issue with the the car back in the day, and then. Uh, I think there was one more thing. I'm not exactly sure, but mm -hmm. you know, when a person like when a person has these bumps, mm -hmm. you know, and you think that there's an opportunity, you stay prepared. That's what I did, you know, because you just never really know, you know, when a guy when a guy has shown that he doesn't always make the best decisions, you never really know what's gonna happen. Marquita, please. There, all the kids are home right now. Yeah, my son and my daughter, they're all home. And you know, it's it's got to be tough on you because they went, because it's a family affair. They went from dad just training, staying in shape, being mm -hmm. available, and all of a sudden dad's back in the title shot again. This time, you know, it's a vacant title. He can he can take it and win it and be free and clear from anybody saying anything about anything because the, the champ got stripped. Um, mm -hmm. What are the kids like? Like, how are they handling this? Because it, it's a huge change in the house. Just well, you just... going to jiu-jitsu is easy, but you go to jiu-jitsu and coming home mad because something didn't work out right is a different point. Yeah. You know, man, it's, a, it's a, they're young. You know, they just understand that I'm not around as much and saying bye over and over again over the course of a day. You know, uh, shh, shh, Marquita, Marquita, please. Um, they know that I'm leaving more during the day. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going in the morning, saying bye, baby, love you guys, then going around noon, saying I love you guys, and then having to leave again in the evening. So they know I'm going more you know, over the course of the day, but again, they're young, mm -hmm. you know, if anybody, if it's hard on anyone, it's Selena, because now she has to be responsible for the two kids by herself all day long. Yeah. Because when I'm back, uh, as you see right now, I'm just laying down. I'm always, you know, tired. I'm resting. Uh, when I'm not at the gym, I'm resting. So, uh, yeah, it's difficult for, for all of them, but for her probably the most. Uh, and how is she doing with it? Like as is with your wife, Triggy. Yeah. I mean, you went through it, you know what, you know how it is, you know what it, it takes a strong woman to actually be involved with anyone in this sport, especially at the highest levels. It's worse at the highest level because at the bottom yeah. level, everybody's kind of broke. Everybody's just trying to make it. Everyone's still got the dream. Obviously, at the highest level, you're like, okay, you got part of the dream. Are you going to get the full dream or just a little of the dream or more than the dream? Like, how's this all going to work out? And she's kind of, she gets hiccups. Like, she went from, okay, train camp's over. Now he's back to just training. He'll be around more. And I was like, oh, crap. Now I got to go back to full time. How is Selena dealing with it? Is there, is there, obviously she's a strong woman. She deals with it quite a bit. You know, she knows how to deal with it. She knows you. But at the end of training camp, what's the conversation like? At the end of the fight, the fight's over, win, lose, or draw. It's, I know she never comes in with, oh, you lost. Or, oh, you won. Let's go celebrate and spend a bunch of money. She's very no. humble. She's very down to earth. But there's got to be that conversation like, baby, we got to go to Hawaii for a little while. We got to take a little yeah. break. We got to. Every time. It feels good. You know, she's like, um, <laughs> we need to do something as a family now. You know, there needs to be time for this family because, you know, a lot of times trick, I'll go right back to work and do TV. Yeah. I'll do all that other stuff because I was you know, like you said, you know, at the beginning, there's no money. 
There's no security. And then now you're having children. It's like, I want to make sure that we don't have to struggle. So my intention is to go right back to work. Go find another way to make income. Make sure I'm making money even when I'm not fighting. But I have to make sure that you balance and find that time. So she always says stuff like, hey, you know what? Fight camp's over. Let's do something as a family. And um, I always do, you know, so whether it be Disneyland for the 50th time or going to Hawaii or, or you know, it, it doesn't matter, you know, so we've got some things planned through the summer good. and, uh, you know, we're good. This Once this fight is over and it's coming up here, you know, May 23rd, what, how much time are you going to take off? Like, because the kids don't get out of, are the kids out of school at that point yeah. or? They, they actually are in like preschool, so we could take them out at any point. But, Perfect. Okay. Um, the summer's coming up, but right after the fight, I'll probably take, I'll take a few weeks off to a month, you know, of, of, of just going in the gym and actually coaching, wrestling on Tuesdays. But uh, then, you know, maybe move around and spar a little bit. But you know what, man? I'm going to take some time to myself and to my family. You know, we're going to go on vacation uh, and, and we're going to go do stuff, you know, hopefully celebrating the championship. So let's talk about the championship. Let's talk about Anthony Johnson. That's the guy that's in your way. I mean, obviously, he's preparing for for uh, John Jones. What do you think has gone through his head now that he's got to fight fight Daniel Cormier? Like, what's he thinking about? Well, I think the game plan has to change a little bit because, you know, John and I are different types of fighters. We are different in stature. Uh, plus, you know, John, he he does a fantastic job of maintaining range. And and he will pressure you, but not in the not at a frantic pace like I try and pressure guys. I pressure guys a little more uh, than he does. Um, obviously, I wrestle a little bit more than John does. But I think at the end of the day for Rumble Johnson or anyone that was supposed to fight John Jones and they get a different opponent for the same prize, they have to be pretty uh, excited uh, at the prospect. Because honestly, Jones has never lost. So to go from fighting the guy that's never lost to the guy that just lost to the guy that you were going to fight, you know, reality has to say you know, I've got a better chance of winning this fight. So what what is it like for you, I mean, coming into this training camp? Because you obviously went from a long-ass time trying to get ready for John Jones, took some time off, and I, now you have a long-ass time to get ready for Anthony Johnson. Stature-wise, height-wise, reach-wise, they're kind of pretty similar. But fighting style-wise, they're not the same at all. Mm -hmm. No, you know, man, last time I – and again, Trick, that was some of the things that I think I made mistakes. I think I left a lot of myself in the gym for the Jones fight because I was so emotionally invested – Mm -hmm. I did a 14-week training camp for the John Jones fight, which is way too long. Uh, I was getting ready to fight Ryan Bader June 6th. So mm -hmm. I was already in training camp when they called me. So when I step into the octagon next week, I will have had seven weeks from the Johnson fight of training. A six-week of training camp, six hard weeks of training camp, and one week to the fight. So it's not like it's that short notice. Right. They are fighters. Uh, Johnson is about 6'2", but... His reach is 74. Jones is 86. So it's oh, not that much of a difference. That's a huge difference. You know, when you're talking about a guy that uses range at 86 and a guy that, yeah. that punches and strikes but only at 74, that's going to seem like a completely different body type to you. Yeah, for sure. And he's tall. Anthony's like 6'2", but he can't hit me from halfway across the octagon like Jones could, you know? So, yeah. Uh, and with Jones, uh, excuse me. With Jones, I didn't have the most difficult time actually closing the distance and getting in close. It was once I got close, he would actually hold me, and I was having trouble actually uh, 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 disengaging in the clinch. I didn't expect him to hold me as much, so when he started to do it, I can honestly say that's not what I prepared for. I prepared that if we were in the clinch, I was winning those positions, uh, and in the fourth and fifth round, John won those positions. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's what it looked like, and it looked like you were you're. And that, you said earlier, you left everything in the gym, or most of you in the gym, uh, getting ready for that fight, that you look kind of sluggish come fourth and fifth rounds. Like, you started really falling apart. And, of course, the takedowns came in late that he got on you versus mm -hmm. you getting on him. That was just fatigue and, and overtraining when it, got, when it finally breaks down, right? You know what, man? It was it was that. You know, and also he did a great job of doing body work early in the fight. He kicked me in the body a lot. He kneed me in the body a lot. He did a good job of, of draining my tank. But, you know, I actually walked out of the third round where we were going through the first three rounds were very competitive, hard fought rounds. Uh, fourth round, I walked out there and I could feel my body starting to dump. I was like, I'm having this adrenaline dump and I can't understand it. Uh, fourth round, John did a phenomenal job of actually pushing me against the cage. Uh, and he took me down twice. Um, and you know what? A lot of, a lot of that had to do with me being lazy because in the fourth round, uh, he took me down. I got up, he took me down. I got up and then 
the third time he went to try to take me down again, and I was like, okay, maybe I should defend this takedown. And then I defended the next few takedowns, mm-hmm. you know, but, but it was like, it was just me being lazy. I was lazy in the fourth round, and I, I managed to not take much damage, which was very surprising because most times John will fight guys, and they're all cut up. They're yeah. ripped from the elbows and everything, and, and I think the extent of my injuries was a, was a busted nose uh, leaving the octagon that night. So, uh, And in the fifth round, I honestly can tell you we did nothing. We literally just hugged against the side of the cage for five minutes. Uh, and uh, it was my inability to actually change those positions, uh, which al- allowed him to just sit there and, hu- and hold me. And I was in, in a, I was in at the actual arena, um, although for this fight I will be in, in live because here in Vegas. Uh, but I was sitting there, I was in actually in an argument, how there was somebody with somebody in the group was watching the fight, talking about how much action was happening in the fifth round. I'm like, literally nothing is going on. For the I untrained think, eye, it looked like a lot of action was happening because it was like pushing and shoving and, and dragging and touching each other's knees and stuff. But really nothing was going on. Was there a point in the middle of that fifth round you are like, well, I'm really just, we're really just standing here and this is really nothing going on. It's been two and a half minutes. Well, at the beginning of the fifth round, I tried to go forward and engage. But mm-hmm. the moment I tried to go forward and engage because Bob Cook, my, my coach said, take him down. You need to take him down. So I went to try and take him down and I went to punch him and engage. But then he just kind of re-grabbed me into the clinch. It was very surprising that he was um, actually initiating the clinches. And uh, uh, he did that. And then once he got me to the side of the octagon, he was actually able to grab my wrist and hold my glove a little bit on the inside. And he was holding me in tight, so I couldn't really get away from him. Um, Yeah, but middle of the fifth round, I'm like, man, we literally aren't doing anything. And I'm like, we're just kind of sitting here. And not even like punches or elbows or anything was getting traded. We were literally just like, staying there and then maybe a couple little knees here and there but you know what though trick that's my fault i should have changed those positions i should not have allowed that to happen uh and then uh once i did that once i did change the position and i put him against the side of the octagon i started attempting takedowns again because in my mind that's what my coach had told me to do uh and i i shouldn't have, i shouldn't have done that i should have just started throwing uh whatever i had left in the tank and trying to knock this guy out now, I know you're not going to try to make a prediction against Johnson. That's not your style. Um, but do you see this fight going the same way kind of with, with Jones? Obviously, it's a different mentality. It's a different style that you're fighting. But Johnson's going to try and stay in there. He's going to try and, and try and close it. When you come in close, he's going to try and lock you down. When you fart, He's going to try and keep the distance and keep you away from him and try to use that long range, even though it's a different kind of style for him. In, in my personal opinion, so I think he's going to try and pull off. We don't know until the, you know, the, act, the octagon door actually gets locked. But... Do you see this fight kind of going the same way? Obviously, with you being the victor at the end, but the same type of fight where it's going to be one guy running away and, and closing it and grabbing once once there's connection and the other guy always kind of kind of trying to attack. It, you, of course, you being the guy trying to attack all the time. I think I'll be going forward and pressuring him, but I've got to be very careful here because this guy has real power. Uh, that's one thing I didn't really <coughs> have, uh, worry about as much with John because he doesn't have the biggest punch. Mm-hmm. The kicks are very dangerous in the elbows. And I think a lot of times you see guys like Glover Teixeira, uh, Alexander Gustafson, even though he fought him very tough, he was so ripped up at the end of the fight is because that, they take a lot of damage and the damage is on their face. And so with that, that amount of damage that you absorb, you, you start to get tired. And then that's where John would get his finishes. Even Vitor, when he finished Vitor, he did it with an arm bar, but it was because Vitor was so exhausted from the damage he had taken over the course of four rounds yep. that he pretty much left his arm out there. Machida, again, himself, he got hurt. And then he uh, he was able, he got finished. So it's like with this guy, there's real power early. There's real power late. It's going to carry. So I've got to be a little more careful uh, on my entries uh, with Anthony Johnson because he has the ability to actually score a knockout. You hated John Jones. Uh, any ill will towards Anthony Johnson? No. And that's actually good because I, I think Rumble Johnson's a great guy. I. I like what he's done. He's he's he, he's had to re he's had to reinvent himself twice. Trig mm-hmm. went from a one seventy pounder, missing weight all the time, missed weight at middleweight, uh, got cut from the UFC, went out and beat whoever they put in front of him, came back to the UFC, didn't had a great performance against Phil Davis, got into some trouble domestically. Mm-hmm. He says he's innocent, not, whatever. He got through that that suspension, wasn't able to fight, came back. Knocked out Nogueira, knocked out Alexander Gustafson. This is a guy that has reinvented himself so many times and has fought back from things that most guys can't handle. So I have a ton of respect for him personally uh, in that sense. Uh, professionally, I really do enjoy what he's done. 
uh, for his career. Uh, but you know what? I just think that I'm a better fighter than he is. It kind of sounds like if if it uh, if it wasn't you he was fighting or somebody else from AKA that you'd almost be voting for him every time that he fights. I and, and I always do. You know, I I root for him because you love seeing the underdog, man. You love seeing the guy that's had to pick himself up, claw and scrape to get to where this guy is. And and yeah, I would have rooted for him unless he's fighting me or one of my teammates. So who's your main trade part? Obviously, Luke Rockhold was for the um for the uh, John Jones fight. Who is for this fight getting ready for Anthony Johnson? Uh, Kane Velasquez, you know, back healthy. Uh, this guy's pushing me like I haven't been pushed in a long time. Um, it's amazing to have a guy that's technically sound, has cardio for days, that can wrestle, and also has big power, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I got Kane, and I'm loving every second of it once the sparring is done. While the sparring's going on, I actually hate it because he's going so hard. But once the sparring's done and I look back on the work, I'm pretty excited. Didn't it, forgive me if I'm wrong, but didn't Dana White come out and say something a little bit while ago that guys up there at AKA are you guys are going too hard, you're sparring too hard because Kane kept getting hurt? Was it a situation where Kane was doing too much and, and wasn't listening to Bob Cook when it was time to go home? He was staying there, which is typical of Kane. I've heard he's done this before where hey, practice is off, the lights are going down, and he's still in there hitting the bag. Is, is it was it one, those situations? You know, it was just a situation. I think a lot of times Kane has been hurt in the, the fight against Brock, he hurt his shoulder in the fight against Dos Santos. He hurt his shoulder in the fight. Uh, his knee was a little jacked up after the Dos Santos fight. So a lot of times his injuries come from the fight. But in the gym, he'll tweak it. But, you know, man, Kane's a guy that's been injured so long that when he gets back in the gym, he wants to go. And I guess sometimes your body just isn't ready to go at that pace. And, you know, injuries happen, man. We fight for a living. It's like in wrestling. The only difference is in wrestling, Trig, and you know this from being at OU, it's like you go, you're hurt. Before practice, you're in the training room, you get treatment. You go work out, you're back in the training room afterwards getting treatment. Yeah. We don't have that in MMA. You have it at these colleges and universities, and that's how you kept guys on the mat. Kane doesn't have that. Injuries do occur. Everybody's hurt to some degree when they step inside of the octagon. It's just that his has been uh, injuries that have taken him out for a long time, and he's the face of our gym. Yeah. Anytime your gym is, is out for a while, people will say the whole gym right. has issues. In reality, I've been fighting on schedule. Josh Thompson's been fighting on schedule. Luke's been fighting on schedule. Uh, then with Khabib getting hurt at the most horrible yeah. time imaginable, it just kind of, it, it almost validates what Dana was saying. Yeah, I mean, well, Khabib kind of dug his own hole because he's so good at talking trash on Twitter <laughs> that all of a sudden now when he gets hurt, it's like, you know, he's got to go ahead and accept that, accept the punishment a little bit when things are going down. But you know, another another great guy to, to watch fight. We're talking about uh, Anthony Johnson earlier. That you, if you weren't fighting him, you'd love to watch him fight. Khabib's another guy I like to watch fight, man. I like the way he trash talks going in the fight and puts it together. It's just that kind of era right now. Yeah, he's a tough, tough guy, man. Twenty two and zero. Yeah, can't, can't can't bitch about that. No matter who it is, could be twenty two tomato cans for him to show up twenty two times ready to fight and win is tough as hell. I say that trig. I go, man. People have hiccups. This guy got the twenty two wins without a hiccup. That's insane. Yeah, that's crazy. He put, and the thing is, he did have some hiccups. But he still won. So he's now what happens? You're like, this won. guy got hiccups and he still won. Like, oh, man, it's a mess. Well, Dan, I'm going to let you go, Max. I don't even want to get to sleep. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for coming on here. Have fun. And I'll see you when you get down here to Vegas. Yes, for sure, Trick. Thank you guys for having me again.